what's going on everyone cold case project back again today we're gonna do something we haven't done in a little while we are going to discuss a missing person's case like i said i haven't done this in a little bit so definitely wanted to cover this one for a while but like i said starting to uh get some stuff up and running so with all that said as I always like to say, if you enjoy the content I share on this channel, please smash that like button, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. So with all that said, let's dive right into this case now. This is the disappearance of a young girl named Rachel Mellenskemp. Now, the Rachel Mellenskemp actually lived about 15 minutes from where I live right now just pretty similar to the Lisa Stebbick case in Plainfield. And when I heard the details of this disappearance, it was just so upsetting. It, it, it really just hit home when you think to yourself, this type of instance can actually happen where you have your own home. So with all that said, let's move into this case a little bit more. Now, Rachel Mellon Skemp was off from school one day. She wasn't feeling good, and she decided to stay home one morning. Now, she wasn't feeling good, and she stayed home. Now, the last person known to have seen her was her stepdad. More on this thing later but in the stepdad's words he came home and some hours later noticed that Rachel wasn't home now this is in January of 1996 she has never been found nor located now this video is not to pass judgment this video is not to call someone out but this is Mr. S this is Vince Mellon. Vince Mellon quickly, like he's like I said, said some hours later he realized that Rachel wasn't home. He is mentioned in multiple parts of Rachel's diary for doing sexually inappropriate things to his stepdaughter. And upon investigation, very quickly invoked his Fifth Amendment right. So with all that said, the person you see in this picture is Vince Mellon in 1996. And I'm just going to leave it at that. With this being the 25-year anniversary of Rachel Mellon's disappearance, I did find an article that was published just a couple months ago that I would like to share with you from one of our local papers here in the Chicagoland area. 25 years ago, after 13-year-old Rachel Mellon vanished from her Bolingbrook home, clouds of suspicion over the case have never lifted. The investigation, according to local police, remains active. No arrests have been made in connection to the disappearance, however. Jeff, Jeff Skemp, now 62, remembers the tragic events of January 31, 1996, all too well. Skemp, who currently works in Forest Park, forever had his life changed in Bolingbrook when his teenage daughter, Rachel, disappeared. She was never heard from again. Rachel was homesick from school the day of January the 31st, 1996. Her stepfather, Vince Mellon, was the last person to see her alive. That same year, Skemp shared with WGN that his head and heart were focused on finding his daughter. I need to keep hope alive that she is still alive somewhere, he told WGN reporters 25 years ago. Now, decades later, Skem says, I'm at peace and have accepted the strong possibility that Rachel is no longer alive. The Bolingbroke Police Department has failed to charge anyone with the teenager's mysterious disappearance. Police maintain the cold case remains active. Preserved evidence is examined annually to see if new technology may unearth some answers. Police say and private investigators continue to follow the case. 
In the interim, the tension between Skemp and his ex-wife, Amy Mellon, over Rachel's disappearance has arisen over the years. Skemp and others blame Amy Mellon's second husband, Vince Mellon, for knowing more than he shared with authorities. He had a past, and Rachel's diary later revealed her account of sexual abuse by her stepfather. Yet no charges have been brought against him by police. WGN once asked Amy Mellon what she was feeling upon news of her daughter's disappearance. Devastation, she replied. Frustration. Not knowing where she is at. Not knowing anything. We had asked to have them put it out as a missing pers person's report as opposed to a runaway without a coat and shoes in the winter time. Rachel's stepfather, Vince, revealed. But Skemp remains unconvinced. To me, it looks suspicious, he said. In the years since, a grand jury was called with no resolution. Fast forward to 2021. Rachel's best friend, Carrie Scaglione, remains emotionally devoted to the girl she remembers so well. She and others have planted a tree, released balloons, and hoped and prayed for Rachel's safe, safe return. Remembering Rachel, Scaglioni says, she was a silly girl who was always in great spirits regardless of what was going on in her house. I always tell people she was an old soul, she said. Scaglioni tells WGN that she tries to keep Rachel's memory alive electronically as well. A Facebook page made in Rachel's honor is dedicated to finding her and or delivering closure in the case. For me, it's important to keep out there what we, what we have done, the now 38-year-old Scaglioni said. Sharing on social media, amazing. We have that now because we didn't have that when she went missing. Scaglioni tells WGN she won't give up hoping to find finding her friend. Somebody knows something, and even the littlest thing could lead to big answers, she said. Just come forward. A plea the same as it was decades ago to anyone who knows where Rachel is or what happened to her. Please come forward. Help bring closure to the tragedy, Amy Mellon asked. Skemp may be at peace with the uncertainty of his daughter's whereabouts, but hopes his loss is a reminder to parents moving forward. To parents out there, love your children, he said. Enjoy every minute you have with them. Now, for those of you who would be interested in finding out a little bit more about the pages I just discussed, I will be linking to those down below in my description. So, let's dive right into the details of the disappearance according to the Charlie Project and the disappearance of Rachel Mellon. Skemp. Rachel was a 7th grader at Ward Middle School in 1996. In January the th on January the 31st of that year, she stayed home from school due to a sore throat. She was last seen taking a nap in her bedroom at her family's residence in Bolingbrook, Illinois, sometime during that afternoon, the afternoon. She was wrapped in a blue blanket at the time her stepfather, Vincent Mellon, last saw her. Vincent stated he and Rachel played video games together. Then she fell asleep and he left the house to take the family's German Shepherd for a walk at 2.30 p.m. He left the dog unlocked while he was gone. He said the dog slipped off the leash to chase a rabbit and as a result, he was gone longer than intended. he intended to be. He didn't return to the house until a half an hour later. Authorities maintained that Vincent never checked on Rachel when he returned home, but he stated that he did indeed notice his stepdaughter had disappeared after he finished the walk. Rachel was apparently re reported missing to investigators at 5 p.m., when her mother, Amy Mellon, and some other family members arrived home. She's never been heard from again. 
Two pillows and a blue blanket she was wrapped in are also missing. Her winter clothes, shoes, and coat were not taken. Even though the wind chill was 20 degrees below zero outside that day, her purse and walkman were also left behind at her residence. There were no indications of forced entry. An extensive search of the surrounding area turned up no signs of Rachel. Thirty stated she could not have survived long if she was outside and exposed to the elements. Initially, it was thought that some of Rachel's relatives had taken her out of state. But that theory has since been discarded. Her bank account has not been touched since her disappearance. And there was no evidence that she'd purchased plane or bus tickets to go anywhere. Vincent gave blood, semen, saliva, and hair samples to authorities in 2000 when Rachel's case was reopened and a grand jury was convened to investigate. Authorities obtained a warrant to get the samples. Amy stated that she believed Rachel was alive and other persons knew about her whereabouts. The Mellon family's attorneys said the case was being reinvestigated due to interest from the television program America's Most Wanted, which wanted to run a segment regarding Rachel's disappearance. Authorities have stated that they believe foul play was involved in Rachel's disappearance. Vincent has been considered a possible suspect in her case for several years. He had scratches on his body after, his, after her disappearance. He said he was injured while repairing his car. He has a long record of domestic violence, and he failed lie detector tests in connection to Rachel's disappearance. The grand jury investigation ended in 2000 without any indictments handed down. Rachel ran away and stayed at a friend's home over a year before 19, her 1996 disappearance. She voluntarily returned home shortly after her departure. Authorities do not believe that she ran away in 1996. She kept a diary which police read after her disappearance. In one entry written months before she vanished, she wrote that Vincent had kissed her and touched her inappropriately. Rachel's father, Jeff Skemp, was living in Texas at the time of her disappearance. He had separated from Amy when Rachel was a toddler. Skemp stated that the day Rachel vanished, she telephoned his mother. He said this was out of the ordinary for Rachel as she would, was not allowed to talk to her grandmother. Rachel was an honor student at the time of her disappearance, and her favorite school subject was science. She was interested in recycling in nature. Skem keeps phone numbers listed in, his, in case Rachel tries to contact him, but he believes she met with foul play. He held a memorial service for her in 2006. Amy and Vincent moved away from the area sometime after 1996. Rachel's disappearance remains unsolved, and no arrests have been made in connection with her case, but her disappearance is being investigated as a homicide. Now, with all that said, through the years, Mr. Skemp has been very vocal and done as much as he can now living in Illinois, now living back in Illinois to try to do whatever he can in the case of his daughter. Now, as far as the melons go, Amy apparently stayed by Vince despite the accusations, despite the fact that this man is the main suspect, despite the fact he had inappropriately contacted his own stepdaughter. And it said that sometime in the 2000s, they moved to Tennessee. Now, this didn't stop Jeff from getting in, in into different you know, circumstances. He was arrested multiple times while in Tennessee. The most recent happening on his record was sometime in 2017, he actually had a run-in when he was backing out of the Crazy Rock Strip Club in Romeoville, Illinois. He was backing out and he hit another vehicle. Now, this is the last thing that I know of that has happened with Vince Mellon. 
they said they've said very little the mom has spoken but seems that she is now t years years plus has stayed by vince's side despite these circumstances so with all that said as i like to say in the comments down below what are your thoughts on this case um just going to inject my own personal opinion here Hearing that the pillows are gone, hearing the blanket is gone, makes me think that sometime that morning or afternoon, Vince made advances on her, and unfortunately, wherever Rachel is, I feel like you'll find those blankets and pillows with her as well, too. Now, as you look down below, please feel free to comment and give me any of your thoughts on this case as well. Now, with all that said, I would like us to all share one moment of silence for Rachel Mellon Skemp. As I said, she's been missing since January the 31st of 1996. So, let's start. All right, everyone. I want to thank Mr. Skemp and her friends who've kept hope alive and kept sights alive for Rachel Mellon Skemp. I want to thank the viewers for tuning in. Please, like I say, like and share this content. It's a good cause, and this is bringing light on things that we just are not hearing about each and every day. So once again, thank you so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.